Hello, this is Tia, and welcome to another video. Today, do, we're doing another video reading, uh, another part reading Hermitcraft, The Terrible Price, The Clock Chronicles, Hermitcraft, and Fiction, as you probably know. Um, we're continuing on with my perspective. Um, some things have happened. And, yeah, if you haven't read um, the other parts, be sure you do so. The playlist is in the description if you are interested in checking it out. It is unlisted for now, but I do plan to make it public once all the once all the episodes are out. But no, we'll see. And um, we should probably get right into the video. If you guys have any theories about what might be going on or any ideas, you can leave them in the comments down below. And yeah, stick around and see what happens. <coughs> Chapter eight. The hermits have been waiting for beatups to return. For ten minutes, before Mumbo heard the back door open and slam shut. He glanced up as he heard footsteps, noticing that Impulse had wandered off somewhere, as the girls were asking Green some questions about what had happened. Everyone in the room went quiet, as they all turned their heads to the hall as beat up appeared, stumbling into the room with an excited expression on his face. The guy said he'd do it. it it'll just take like a half an hour, depending on when he gets back, beat up reported as he looked around the room. Where did Impulse go? I think he went upstairs to check on Caleb and Scar. <laughs> Grant told him matter of factly. I hope they're doing okay up there. Beatus nodded as he looked at the curb. What have you been do What have you guys been up to then? Just waiting? Well, this isn't really a reason to do much but wait, Mumbo admitted with a shrug. Security's already high here. There are no calls for help or backup. There aren't any machines trying to kill us right now, so we're just waiting. Did you at least come up with some ideas on how we're going to fix this? Beatus pressed as he looked over at Jim and Pearl as he asked it. We have somewhat of an idea, Green replied reluctantly. Well, at least I do. It's really risky, Jim warned firmly. I know, but Mabo and I are probably the best chance for Grimba right now. Seeing as I was able to get through to him just by touching the machine just right. Green chuckled nervously. I never said we'd be alone. I know, Jim agreed with a nod. But you'd be going into the lion's den pretty much on your own. Mr. A isn't one for chatting. He did with you, Pro pointed out. How threatening to blow up a bunch of armor stands in the meeting hall. Jim countered for giggly. You should have seen his face. He didn't see that coming. Right, Green nodded. Then maybe we should distract him somehow. I'd rather try to avoid him altogether. He's quite dangerous, Pearl said simply. Straining, as she said it. We don't know how heavily guarded this place it might be when we find it. I would assume Stray would want to keep something like Rumba heavily guarded, Bumba pointed out, so that people like us can't try to ruin his plan. That won't stop us though, right? Beat up that. We could try sneaking in with invisibility potions and get into the control room. Maybe, Grant nodded. Mumbo watching as the hermit looked out the window. I would have expected Mr. A to do something by now with those machines. Depends on how many he has and if he has the source needed to power them, beat up said simply. And he went over to the window as well, glancing out. Mumbo still looked at Lance as well, not seeing anything out of the place as he noticed one of their escorts crossing top of the wall, patrolling the area to ensure that it was safe. So far, everything seemed okay. Or he's waiting for something. I must have got a frown. What, though? Get us separated so he can pick us off one by one? Green asked curiously. We haven't seen any of those machines here, so maybe he doesn't know we're here. Beat it thoughtfully. It's not too hard to figure that out, Jem admitted. It's just one of the most secure bases here. We made sure of that. Right. Beat up agreed, looking from window to, from the window to face her. Then why has he been so quiet? If he wanted some of us dead, wouldn't he want to go after us hard and relentlessly? I don't know, Green admitted, shaking his head as he took out his communicator. But it's about time we do our call-ins. Right, we can do our roll calls to make sure everyone's accounted for, Pearl said quickly as she stood, pulling out her device. That's something important to do while we wait for a report. Mumbo watched as both Pearl and Green left the room. Jem went for the stairs before stopping. Hermit looked over at the sound of footsteps coming down the stairs as a bull smiles. <laughs> Everything all right down here? 
Don't remember that story. He's like, I hope so. We're just doing check-ins. Can you call Zed and Tango to make sure everything's okay? Okay. <laughs> Impulse nodded as he arrived at the bottom. Do you think Mr. Drake could have done something under her noses? Easily, Jem frowned as she shook her head. It's good to make sure, just in case. You never know. All right. Impulse smiled encouragingly as he pulled out the device and pressed a few buttons as the call went through. Minus pounced and Mumble got to his feet, going into the kitchen as he heard voices in the other rooms. Based on what he could hear, he was overly positive. There's no sign that Mr. had caused some havoc somewhere or tried to go after someone. It was almost as if he disappeared completely, taking the supercomputer with him. Mumble went to the cupboard and opened it, pausing as he heard a distant humming in the back of his mind. He threw his hands on the cool metal handle of the cupboards as the humming continued, glancing toward the kitchen window, small and round window, that looked out into the middle of the field beyond, cut off by the wall, tall and foreboding. Mumba? A voice called as the hermit snapped back into attention, not realizing his mind had wandered. He turned to see Green standing at the hall, watching him. Did you hear that? Mumbo asked, curiously. Hear what? The humming noise. No, I didn't hear it. Why? Green went over to the window and peeked out. Oh, I was just wondering, I guess. Mumbo shrugged. Just as a blast of red light exploded through the window in front of them, both of the hermits flew backward, Mumbo hearing Green scream as he hit the wall, heart collapsing to the floor. Chapter 9 Guys, are you okay? Pearl's voice asked as she stormed into the room. Mumbo managed to sit up, rubbing his head as he took in the room. The window was completely shattered, as well as part of the wall. Plates, pots, and pans were strewn everywhere. As he looked over to his left, Green was stumbling to his feet as he brushed himself off, saying he was fine before he glanced outside, where the window used to be. Don't let it get inside the building! The distant voice called from the outdoors, and his pearl helped Mumbo to his feet as she, he finally saw what Green had seen. Walking into the crumbling remains of part of the wall was an eliminator. Its tall, looming figure making an escort who charged in looked like ants. We need to hide in the bunker, Pearl said firmly, and as the hermit heard footsteps, looking over to see the others. All of us? Beat up's ass with a frown. We don't know who it's after, she said determinedly. I'll go, gra I'll go grab the car from upstairs. He pulled straight back down the hallway before anyone could stop him. Are you sure there's only one of them? There's only one of them? Bubba asked nervously. I don't know, Pearl frowned as she gently pushed him to the hallway. Green, right behind them. We can't take any chances. The protectors would want us to be safe, especially you. Right, Mumbo nodded. With a frown as Jem opened the secret door under the, from under the stairs, he stepped inside. Beat up the door he had opened the other hidden door as Mumbo glanced over his shoulder. Justin Green wasn't behind them anymore. Where's G? He was just behind me, Pearl said as she glanced over her shoulder. I'll go look for him, Beat up insisted. No, we shouldn't get separated, Jem pressed, grabbing his arm firmly keep him from running off. Pulse is already upstairs with Scar. Green probably went, went to have some additional backup. Or see if he could help with the machine. Mobo frowned. Jim shook her head. That's too dangerous. Not dangerous enough for Green. Mumbo sighed as he went down the stairs. His, he heard footsteps at all. There you are, a voice said faintly from above as Mumbo managed to make it down the stairs, patting his pocket carefully before remembering he didn't have a device anymore. He looked up just as he saw Impulse walking down, carrying Scar as Mobo went to one of the beds, pulling back the covers. Caleb's keeping an eye out for us. Um, Impulse reported as he had lowered the sleeping hermit onto the bed, frowning. Thought Crane would be down here with you guys. I don't know where he went, but he ran off on his own again, Mobo shook his head. Maybe I should. Impulse started, walking toward the staircase. He stopped in his tracks as Jem made it down. No, you shouldn't, Jem said calmly. Last thing we need is for us to be separated. She smiled. She added, Pearl and Beatups are looking for her, for him. <laughs> I hope he's not doing what I think he's doing. Mumbo groaned softly. She sat down in a right chair. What is that exactly? Pulse asked as he stopped from, stepped away, back from the doorway to let Jem through. Try to reach Grimbot again to see if he <laughs> tell us where he is. Oh, such hesitantly. But wouldn't that train him? 
Jabez was concerned. She said and didn't do anything to him, Mumbo pointed out. He could have been lying, Impulse reminded him. Mumbo shook his head again, not saying anything else, and they heard the faint sound of explosions. It sounds like there's a lot more than one, Impulse frowned at last, breaking the silence. How many does this guy have? More than he'll ever need, Bumbo smiled sadly, as they looked over at the stairway. They won't find us down here, right? Even if they try to track us, it won't go down, go down this well. Impulse said confidently. I'll be right, Jim nodded. Looking over at Scar as she walked over to him. I'm surprised all this commotion hasn't woken him. I'm just glad the laser shot at us instead of at, in his room. Honestly, Bobo shuddered. As terrifying as it was. Yeah, me too. Jim smiled, hopefully. She went over to him. You okay, though? Yeah, I'd feel better if Green wasn't up there, though, risking his neck. Never made a minute. You aren't the only one, Impulse replied softly, as Bumbo glanced back up the stairwell once more. Sounds from above going quiet. Everything has gone quiet. Chapter 10. Because why not? These are a couple of your chapters, and why not? <laughs> the silence was deafening as the three hermits watched the stairwell. The thudding and explosions had stopped. Not even the faint sound of humming from the redstone lamps. Should we go up there and see what the damage is? Impulse asked slowly, breaking the silence. Only if we know if it's th that it's safe, Jem said calmly as she walked across the room, the staircase, staircase, looking up at the dark into the darkness. I don't hear anything, Bumbo said nervously. I know. Jem frowned, and she pulled out her communicator just as the faint sound of redstone gears could be heard. As she looked up again, a really smile formed on her face. As the three of it. The three of them heard distant voices from above. The sound of feet walking down the steps could be heard, one sounding a lot quicker than the others. As Jem stepped aside, Bumbo's little green appeared from the stairwell with a delighted smile on his face. He looked relatively unharmed as he held up a slip of paper. I did it! Green said triumphantly. I know where they took him. It worked? Mumbo walked over to his friend. Green handed him a slip of paper, which had a set of coordinates scribbled across its tiny scrap. Yeah, with a little bit of help, Peter replied, as he and Pearl arrived at the bunker as well, the door mechanism above closing behind them. We managed to corner one long enough for Green to jump on it. It was about three or four of eliminators total, Jim. <laughs> Pearl frowned, shaking her head. Half of the kitchen and main room is in shambles. But you got them? They both pressed cautiously. I think so, Peter nodded confidently. The protectors are pretty quick were pretty quick to step in when they realized what Green was doing. Yeah, I'm probably gonna get in here full after that. <laughs> Norman admitted sheepishly. It was worth it though. Mumbo <laughs> smiled, shaking his head in amusement as he put a hand at his friend's shoulder. Just promise me you won't do something like that again. I can't <laughs> Green giggled, pulling away as Mumbo pocketed the coordinates. So who's coming? Where are we going? No? Beat up that. Why not? The sooner we get to the left chin, Mr. A will send more to attack other hermits. Green lifted his chin, confident flaming in his eyes. The longer we wait, the riskier it gets. Someone should stay here with Scar, Impulse and Chit Chat did. He still needs time to some time to recover. That's right, Green nodded, looking over at Scar, still sound asleep in in the bed. The hermit's face no longer looked as pale as it had been a few hours ago. He looked peaceful, free. Finny Pain. I can stay, Impulse suggested. Won't be alone, since Caleb and Blake would be here with me. You sure? For last, Tilly grew curiously. I'm not letting anyone get, in clo get close to Scar, the hermit replied confidently. Okay. Pearl chuckle chuckled, looking over at the others. So the f it's five of us done? Plus our escorts, Green reminded her. They they'll follow us regardless. Green sh and Jim shook her head with a smile. You're not giving them a chance to argue with us. They won't like it. I know that. Green sighed, looking over his shoulder to the stairwell. There's no time. We need to act before Mr. A does something really bad. What did Grandpa show you? Mumbo asked him curiously. As Jem walked over to the one of the chests, opening it as she took out some potions, bandages, and other tools and put them into a shulker box. I asked him where he was, Green replied calmly. I didn't know if Mr. A know. I don't know if Mr. A knows I've glitched the system twice now. 
But if he suspects an issue, he might move him. So you don't have a lot of time. Impulse stated, and he took a seat next to Scar's bed. We don't, Green agreed. That's why we have to do this. I know the protectors will have our backs regardless. I want to make sure they see us leaving. So what are we waiting for? Vito said excitedly. Let's go. Jim got to her feet after pulling away the shulker box. We should be good to go. I got some extra supplies, just in case. The other hermits nodded, not saying anything as the five of them climbed up the stairs. The redstone door opened as they neared it. Jem, having activated it by a hidden button he hadn't spotted earlier, had they arrived at the safe room. The door to the hallway was half open as Mumbo stepped aside first, taking the destruction as he saw holes in the floor, walls, and ceiling. As the evening sun inched toward the horizon, he could see the smashed remains of an eliminator, of an eliminator, crushed by some debris from the floor above. His single eye was dim, but not completely dark. Where are the escorts? Mumbo asked as he looked away from the scrap metal, walking to the main room. I see them just outside, Green replied, pointing to his left at the hermit's, at the hermit's spotted Caden, Matthias, and Blake talking about something while scouting the newly made hole in the wall. Do we fly now? Peter asked quietly. The hermit stepped out into the sunlight. Mumbo grabbed his rockets. He held them tight, preparing to launch at the command. We do know where we're going, right? Pearl asked hopefully. It's just north of us, Green nodded. I don't think we'll miss it. Lead the way then, Peter nodded. A hermit leap leapt into the air. <laughs> Bobo looking back as he saw the escort spotting them take off. Sure enough, they took off right after them. But at least Kate and him did, as Blake ran aside, probably to check on the other two downstairs. You are right, Jim giggled nervously as the escorts drew closer. Of course, Green Green mischievously. It's their job to make sure we don't get ourselves into too much trouble. The hermits continued to fly. As Green explained the new, to the new arrivals what was going on, it was pretty clear neither Matthias nor Caden were hap too happy about the plan, but as usual, there wasn't much they could do to stop them. They were already well on their way to the destination. He just hoped it wasn't too late. I'm going to end this here. <sighs> yeah, I'm going to end this here. So, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one, next part. I don't know, there might be one or two more parts left. I don't know. It just depends. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Never there might be.